for me in a strange way because people who question the device are always like, well, what, you know, what's to say it's not just radio waves that are coming through and doing these types of things? We have this thing called the FCC, and they have very specific words that cannot come through. And Andrew Borden, every single time we talk to him, uh, breaks those rules about 100 times over. So, yeah, he, uh, he definitely does pick up on modern language and use it. Yes. Right. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, Tyler works on the project just like I work on the project. We're, we're kind of our, consider ourselves useful idiots for Edison, basically. You know, we all have our specific thing that we do. Um, but, yeah, everybody has spirit guides. Everybody has uh, something around them, one, two, ten. Some people have more than that. And sometimes when I do private readings, people will just want to talk to their guides. And that's a pretty incredible experience, too, to find out how many uh, energies are around them from the very beginning. So, yeah. Yes. You know, we didn't plan a tour. Uh, we usually do it at nighttime. We take everybody out to the, you know, the haunted building, and we turn out the devices and do the whole thing. But, yeah, hopefully may, next year. We'll do it next year. Absolutely. Hi. Right. Well, a lot of people talk about that being synchronicity. When you start seeing the matching numbers come up like that, um, usually, like deja vu, um, they say that that means you're in the right place. If you're seeing those things happen on a consistent basis or if you're having the visions that uh, you were there before, that means that you're on the right path and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're supposed to only worry when you don't see those things anymore. So I believe that, absolutely. Yes. Mm hmm Right, the witching hour. Everybody talks about that dead time and things like that. You know, usually I, I don't think that there's anything magic about that time, but I think what it is is that's when the world's most quiet. You know, people have either come home and gone to bed or people are just getting up to start up the morning. So I think we're more aware of our surroundings, and that animal instinct kind of kicks in at that point. We hear everything that's around us. So that's my personal opinion on it. I don't know if there's anything special about that time or not, though. Any other questions, guys? Am I missing anybody? Yeah. <laughs> no, they work for free, per gratis. Yeah, they, uh, no, it's interesting. We go in, like, I'll give you an example. A couple of nights ago, I was at uh, Eastern Kentucky University, and uh, we got there, and we started doing our investigation, and we got into an old theater that was in there, and we used night vision to kind of see if they're there, and uh, we turned on the night vision camera, and you could watch. As we were talking, we said, if anybody wants to come forward and speak through the telephone, please come forward now. And you see all these orbs come into the room and start flying towards us in the camera at that point. We turned on the device, and it turns out that we had no idea what we were walking into, but we actually did a mass crossing of spirits that night. They were attracted to the machine, and they knew that we could hear them and help them cross over. So I like to think that we're doing a service for them by, by putting their voice out there and getting that message across for them too. So since money means nothing to them anymore, you know, hopefully we're doing something good for them on that side. Yeah. Oh, yes. Most of the time when we turn the machine on, we will get somebody who comes through, either a family member or a spirit that's associated with the building or whatever the case might be. Um, and I've got a lot of theories as to why that happens. I think sometimes, uh, since time doesn't really exist on that side, I think that uh, these things have already been kind of planted here. All the answers and the things that come through are already here beforehand, and we're just kind of uh, catching up to it, if that makes sense. So basically, we're walking into that time and hearing those things at that point. Yeah. Oh, sure. Right. Uh-huh. They definitely can. Yeah, spirits, free will, they'll follow you anywhere that they choose to go. Um, there's not a lot you can do about that. If you do pick up a spirit, they will be with you. Um, the only thing I encourage people to do, if you find somebody you don't want with you at that time, it, it sounds really cheesy when you say it, but you basically have to give them the cold shoulder. You have to tell them, hey, I don't want you around. And at that point, most people will, spirits will back off at that point. But they do have free will, absolutely. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Um, belief systems are very strong, and, uh, and and not to discount anyone's beliefs. That's not what I'm doing. But 
anytime that you you or a group of people put in energy and a, and a belief into something, usually you'll see that come through and it'll work. And we had a really interesting thing that happened with the documentary that I did uh, a while back. They took footage of me using the telephone uh, to a tribe in Africa. And there was an actual witch doctor that was there that, that was witnessing what was playing through. They gave no information on what was happening, and he didn't speak the language. But in his language, he came through and said, this man is contacting the dead, and these are dead people who are coming through because he believes that this works, and that's the reason that this takes place, which tells you that the rituals and the belief system really has everything to do with it at that point. But we have gone through different rituals and, and had a lot of success doing that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sometimes we'll get little glimpses of the future, but there do appear to be rules on that side. Um, you know, even when we ask questions about what it's like over there, um, they're very guarded about certain things. You get very generic answers sometimes about more beautiful than you can possibly imagine, you know, things along those lines. The one thing I kind of slipped through, and I think Tyler gave me information, I don't know if I was supposed to get or not, but it really kind of blew me away, is he told me, and I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit because it was just insane, that there is no physical reality on the other side. Essentially, it's all energy. So basically, you project out your heaven. You project out your utopia. And you have a soul circle of people, your family, your friends, that are on that other side. And they project out their reality. And you share that common reality at that point. It's amazing. Somebody said that to me. And I went back inside and said, yeah, very similar to it. Yeah. So you actually do project out your actual reality. Yes. I do um, I always say that I, I've actually been possessed three separate times. And, um, yeah, I do believe in exorcisms. I don't necessarily um, buy into some of the religious aspects of the exorcisms. Um, I really think that, again, it goes down to that belief system. If somebody can pull that belief system out of you and bring that through, that you can actually uh, get rid of the entities that way. And uh, I actually lost almost four, uh, four weeks of my life at one point um, from uh, – uh, possession. So they are very real and you have to be very, very cautious. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I could barely hear you. Well, I'll, I'll give you the, the quick story behind it. I was doing an event out in New Orleans and, and we decided that it was right around Mardi Gras. We were doing it right afterwards. So we made the decision to go down to Mardi Gras to do what you do during Mardi Gras, which is to have a good time and kind of lost ourselves in the whole idea of it, and we're getting ready to do the event. So uh, the next day after Mardi Gras, uh, we actually got up that morning, and I respect all religions, but we were walking down the street, and uh, a girl that I knew actually got one of the ash crosses on her head for Ash Wednesday, and for some reason, I was enraged why she did this. I don't know why I couldn't explain it, and I was angry with myself for being upset, but it felt like I was almost coming down with the flu is the only way to describe it, and pretty soon... Over this time period, it felt like I was uh, witnessing things that were taking place, but I didn't feel right. Then I felt like almost a passenger in my own body. Things were taking place that I had no control over. And eventually it got to the point where I literally lost all memory of everything that had taken place. And they'll show me video clips of things that happened during that time now. And I look at it, and it's like looking at a stranger. It's me, but it was definitely not me, if that makes sense. And uh, it took a very good friend of mine who, who is an exorcist to, to actually bring me back through, bring me back around. Yes. I do. Um, you know, it seems we talk about energy not being able to be created nor destroyed, but we do have to come from a certain source. And when they talk about the energy, they talk about the well, which apparently all spirit energy comes from this one source. And they talk about us coming back several times where we work together on this side and the other side. Sometimes we're here, sometimes we're there, sometimes we're working side by side that way. And the soul circle is what actually takes you through the lessons, and you go through several different lifetimes trying to learn these lessons. And basically, uh, while you're on the other side, you have to go through um, – you, you set up your own reality at that point. You have to set up the lessons that you're going to learn, and it's your job when you get here through free will to actually make that happen. So I absolutely do believe in, in reincarnation. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Yes. You know, that's when we get into these discussions about what takes place on the other side. And whenever I bring up the word God or I use specific, you know, uh, religious names and things like that, they always come back to universe. When, whenever I say, you know, is God there? Are you with God? They'll usually say, yes, we're, we're within the universe, which to me is kind of the universal term for God. So, 
Yeah, n nothing very specific, though. Yes. No. <laughs> I, yeah, I tell people, you know, when we first I, I announced that I was on Coast to Coast Radio, and I said, you know, Frank's built this machine, and it works, and so on and so forth, and, of course, everybody thought we were nuts when we talked about it, but immediately everybody wanted to get one of these things. And, you know, Frank only builds so many. He's a physical medium. He builds them. It, it takes mediumship ability to actually use the device correctly. So people would go out and start trying to make something that sounded like it to the point that they were taking uh, Radio Shack radios and they would pull a, a pin and it would just scan radio dials back and forth. And people would make up stories around it and things like that. So I tell people, you know, there's really no reality to that. Um, but, you know, people still do it anyway. So I just tell people, be cautious because, again, if you put the energy into it, you don't know what's going to come through. So absolutely. Any other questions, guys? All right. Oh. Uh, the only way that it happens is Frank contacts me and tells me he's built the latest one, and at that point I go and pick it up. That's how it works. I uh, put him in my museum. <laughs> we basically have a ghost box museum. Absolutely. Oh, sure, go ahead. Right. Yeah, Halloween, I think the whole idea behind it is that everybody's concentrating on the day and what it means. And I think a lot of spirits take advantage of that collective energy, and they'll show themselves more on that night. Um, I did have a, um, a ghost hunt on a campus two years ago, and we saw three full-bodied apparitions on Halloween, which was absolutely incredible. That does not happen very often. So, yeah, I think it's that collective energy that makes it happen. Yes. Okay, guys, well, thank you for having me out. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs>